Earth, you're going to have first the neutrinos, who are said to be going faster than light, they're going to hit you. And then in four or five hours, light is going to hit you because they haven't been moving through space at the same speed, and it's been a long time, and you know the <coughs> difference is very slight, it's been a long, dist long distance, so they will have separated, and therefore the two are going to hit at different times. And that's a very accurate experiment because you're involving <coughs> distances that are millions of light years, not small distances on, on Earth. And they hit at the same time, right exactly at the same time. So when we hear this experiment, our first reaction is, better do it again. Check it again. Yes, please. So is the neutrino an atom or It's smaller than an atom. Oh, okay. It's very much smaller than an atom. You call it a neutrino, which means little neutron, little neutral particle in the Italian, neutrino. Because it, it is, it's, it's very small. It has no electric charge. I mean, someone's not there. That's why it's so very difficult. <coughs> the little man who wasn't there, he wasn't there again today. Oh, hard wish he'd go away. I mean, that's, the neutrinos are like that. So if there's any time that you have a scientific experiment in physics and you can't give a good answer, you can't explain it, blame it on the trees. And no physicist will be able to dispute it. Because it could be true, we don't know it. What I thought was interesting when that came out, I saw that notice in the papers and it was reported that they had some hard to explain results. And the way I interpreted a couple of the articles I saw about it was the people that did the experiment did exactly what I would predict scientists would do. They'd say, here we made some observations that we find almost impossible to explain. This is what we did. These are the results. Uh, can all you guys help us out? Right. And you know, look for expertise and wisdom and how do we fix our apparatus and how do we change our measurements and can anyone else? Right. It just seemed exactly the appropriate thing for scientists to, to be doing when they're doing <coughs> science. We find something unexplainable, <coughs> so we can, can you give us a hand in explaining this? Yeah. I, I was just very, very pleased to see that. Yeah, and that is true. Because, you know, we're always open to new ideas, new developments, changes can always be a change. And you know, maybe for instance, general relativity is true in a long distance and not in a short distance, and therefore maybe this thing, which wasn't true with the, the neutrinos coming from supernova millions of light years away, maybe it is true with neutrinos in just a hundred yards away from each other. You know, could be, but we don't, we don't think so. And you have to remember, a new idea may have to really fight to be accepted. We just had a, uh, a Nobel Prize work, uh, awarded, a guy by the name of Schachner. And if you want to do a paper, take his career, because when he made his original observation, he was working at what was then called the National Bureau of Standards in Washington. Now we call it the National Institute of Science and Technology, NIST. But he was there. And he made the discovery, and he announced it. His boss came to him and put a book on his desk on crystal structure and said, would you please read this? We want you to re recognize that everything you're saying is nonsense. And here is the evidence that it's nonsense. They, they put so much pressure on him that they finally forced him out of the National Bureau of Standards and essentially drove him out of the country. And he went back to Israel. But he was right and they were wrong. <laughs> and now he has a Nobel Prize. Well, you know, science, you have to be open to the fact that there may be new ideas around. What I always tell my students that I find very interesting. You can be bored <coughs> in life. You can be deadly bored in life, but only if you choose to be. Because life is not boring. It is filled with wonderful, magnificent, new developments, surprises, all kinds of new ideas constantly bursting forth in <coughs> ending steam. 
You can ignore them and just say, how about them? But only if you choose. You can be bored in life, but only if you choose to be. That's one of the fun of being scientists, by the way. You know, we're used to that. Well, I think that was a good summary statement. Yeah, I think it's about time to go.